How to reduce noise in raw therapy. Do you use raw therapy and want to reduce noise? Here is how to do it. Step 1. Open your image in raw therapy and don't apply any sharpening. Make sure you zoom to 1 to 1 or 100%. That's because the effects of the noise reduction will not be visible at lower zoom levels due to the way raw therapy renders the image. It's also helpful to zoom into an important area of your image, such as one where you can see both detail and background. Step 2. Reduce noise. In raw therapy, there are just two noise reduction modules, impulse and just noise reduction. They are both found in the detail tab. Impulse noise reduction is a special purpose module that is meant to get rid of noise that looks like black pepper sprinkled in your image. It sometimes occurs when you heavily lift shadows. If you have areas that look like this, it may be good to turn it on. It works best with the threshold values between 50 and 60. Higher than that, and you risk losing too much fine detail. Don't forget to actually turn the module on. If you don't, the module will have no effect even if you change the slider values. Weird. Anyway, see how the impulse reduction gets rid of these small black specks? Now, let's get to the main noise reduction module. The first option is color space. Should you choose lab or RGB? This will be dependent on your image. In some cases, I've noticed that lab produces smoother, more natural backgrounds, and in other cases, RGB feels more appropriate. I suggest testing both out on your image, paying special attention to the backgrounds. Also, if your image has strongly saturated colors, RGB will likely work better. If you're unsure, just leave it on lab. When it comes to the mode, I suggest leaving it on conservative because the aggressive mode too easily desaturates colors and doesn't really provide any additional benefits. Keep the mode compensate for lightness turned on and keep the gamma at the default value. The main tool is the luminance section. We'll talk about the chroma noise later. There are two ways to work with it, either using the slider method or the curve method. I suggest starting out with the slider method because it's easier. To use it, slowly bring up the luminance slider until the noise has been acceptably eliminated. Chances are doing this will blur the details too much. That's where the details slider comes in. Slowly increase it until the details have been restored to your liking. It will be a bit of a compromise, but the best value will usually be just before the noise starts to reappear in the background. What about the curve method? Well, it can be used sometimes when your background is much darker than your subject, like with this egret. The curve allows you to restrict the noise reduction to a particular luminosity range. To use it, first set the luminance control to curve and bring the detail recovery slider back down to zero. Now, you have to define your curve. To add a node, click on part of the curve. To delete a node, drag a node out of the curve window. And you can reset your life's work by clicking this arrow. The higher the curve is in a particular area, the stronger the noise reduction will be in the indicated luma range defined by that area. Here, this curve is mainly reducing noise in the darker areas while not applying any noise reduction to the lighter white feathers, which don't show much noise anyway. Once your curve is defined, bring up the detail recovery slider should any areas with important detail be softened too much by the noise reduction, just like in the slider method. For example, here, I have to bring up the detail recovery a little because the details in the bill of the bird were softened too much. But at least, I don't have to worry about the feathers. When you turned on the noise reduction module, you may have noticed that the module got rid of most of your chroma noise or color noise as well. So, it's very unlikely that you'll need to put the chrominance section on manual. But, if you really have some coarse color splotching in your image, you can put it in manual and increase the red, green, and blue, yellow sliders if you notice some unusual color patterns in your denoised areas. The chrominance master controls the strength of the overall effect. Like the luminance curve, there is a chrominance curve, but I suggest leaving that alone because the chrominance denoising already works so well on all images of value. Finally, let's say you are happy with the overall denoising, but after, there are still some jagged or rough areas in your image that look like artifacts. That's what the median filter is for. It smooths these rough areas away while keeping a good amount of detail. Keep the median method on luminance only. The median type that is the least aggressive is 3x3 soft. You may wish to try 3x3, but it is already too aggressive in my opinion, and the other options smooth the image way too much. 
If there are still a few artifacts after turning on the median filter, you can try increasing the iterations to two or three. I think one is usually enough. However, if you're viewing your image at normal size, I'm not really a fan of using the median filter at all, but it could be useful in some cases. Now, after all this process, your image might look a little soft. Don't worry, just sharpen your image using capture sharpening and the regular sharpening module and it will look right as rain. But don't overdo it. Here's a before and after so you can see the fruits of our labor. That's about it. I hope this video helped you reduce noise in your images, but if it did not, try using a tripod.